Why do some muscle groups respond better to certain rep ranges versus others? This is a question that one of my lifters was asking me about the other day when we were talking about accessory exercises and why do we do some exercises for lower reps, something like you know five to ep like five to eight reps. Why do we do other exercises for 10 reps, 15 reps, 20 reps per set? And I think the answer is pretty simple and it's more in the execution of the exercise. Certain exercises that target certain muscle groups have different biomechanics in terms of the levers that we're using, starting with the eccentric component versus a concentric component. And I don't think it gets as crazy as some of the theories out there that surmise that certain muscle groups are composed of a certain distribution of muscle fiber types, slow twitch versus fast twitch. If it's a slower twitch muscle, we need to train it with higher reps per set. If it's a fast twitch muscle, we need to train it with lower reps per set because that's what that muscle group is good at. I don't think it gets as complicated as that. You'll hear some other theories like the effective reps theory where it's like there are only so many hard reps per muscle group per workout that you can do and it's relatively low, you know, something like five to 10 reps overall. So you should be trying to do more low rep training close to failure. And I just don't think that works great for certain muscle groups. And really kind of the take home message here is that I think that low rep sets close to failure are, even if the effective reps theory is correct, even if the idea that you should target muscle groups with rep ranges based on fiber types, that may be all well and good, but it just doesn't really play out in the real world because doing low reps per set close to failure for some muscle groups really just doesn't work very well. There are some muscle groups where it can work really well. Examples of that would be kind of our pressing muscle groups. So for our upper body, things like our chest, things like our triceps, for our lower body, our quads especially. And I think one of the big reasons for that is because a lot of those exercises start with an eccentric component. If you're benching, you're gonna be starting by lowering down the bar and loading up those muscle groups so you can kind of get away with going heavier, fewer reps per set and train a little bit closer to failure. Same thing with like a squat or a leg press. But if you think about a lot of our more pulling muscle groups, things like our biceps, things like our lats and our mid back, things like our hamstrings, a lot of those exercises start with the concentric component. So you don't get to load up that muscle group ahead of time. It's really, really, really hard to do a tough set of five on bicep curls without ruining your technique. It's really hard to do a set of five close to failure on a lat pull down or on a seated leg curl. I think those muscle groups benefit a lot more from using a higher rep range close to failure because it's just easier to do the exercise correctly. I don't care if a set of five with one or two reps in the tank or a set of five to failure is optimal for bicep training. It's really, really hard to do biceps with good technique if you're going that few reps per set. So in my opinion, as a coach, I would worry less about the fiber type distribution or the actual number of reps per set. And I would just worry about making sure that you're getting relatively close to failure, somewhere between one and three reps left in the tank, kind of regardless of what the rep range is. Research seems to, seems to indicate that the effective rep range for building muscle is pretty wide. So that whole low rep close to failure training just doesn't really work for some muscle groups. So kind of use your, use your common sense and figure out what allows you to do the exercise with the best technique while also approaching muscular failure.